The wild hunt raced across Salisbury Plain. The creatures Sophie and Josh had only briefly glimpsed earlier were closer now. Some were recognizable. Black dogs and gray wolves, enormous red-eyed cats, massive bears, curled tusked boars, goats, stags, horses. And others had joined the hunt. Human-shaped figures carved from stone, creatures with bark for skin, leaves for hair and branches for limbs raced after them. Sophie and Josh recognized more of the Jani Kukati, the hooded ones. They saw shaven skinhead kookabooths wielding chains and knights in stained and rust-eaten armor. Tattooed warriors in furs and Roman centurions in broken armor limped after red-haired Derigdu. And running among the monsters were perfectly normal-looking humans carrying swords, knives, and spears. Josh found these the most frightening of all. The twins looked to where Stonehenge loomed dark and indistinct in the night, and knew that they were not going to reach it in time. We'll stand and fight, Josh panted, analyzing the situation and their limited options. I've got a little strength left. Maybe I can call up some more rain. A savage, high-pitched howling echoed across Salisbury Plain. Josh's heart sank as he saw movement to their right. Another group was moving in to cut them off. Trouble, he stated. On the contrary. Palamedes grinned. Look again. And then Josh recognized the figure leading the group. Shakespeare! The bard led the Gabriel hounds in at an angle. The well-disciplined ratchets crashed into the mismatched army, bringing it to a shuddering halt. Iron spears and metal swords flashed in the night, and a pall of dust quickly rose up over the plain. William Shakespeare, in full modern police body armor and visor helmet, fell into step with Palamedes. Well met, he said. I thought I told you not to wait past sundown, the Saracen Knight said. Oh, everything comes to he who waits, Shakespeare said. And you know I never listen to you anyway, the bard added with a shy smile. Besides, with nothing moving on the road, I guess you wouldn't find a place to hide until dark. Palamedes dumped the unconscious alchemist on the ground and started slapping Flamel's cheeks. Wake up, Flamel. Wake up. We need to know which stone. Nicholas's pale eyes blinked open. Get to the other stone, he whispered hoarsely. Gabriel appeared out of the night. His bare flesh was streaked with black soot. It caked his long hair. There are just too many of them and more coming every minute, he panted. We can't hold them. Josh pointed toward the circle of stones. Pull everyone back to Stonehenge. The same feeling of peace he had felt earlier had washed over him again. There were no more decisions left to make. Once again, all he had to do was stand and fight. He would protect his sister to the end. Pressing his hand against his chest, he felt the two pages of the codex crinkle under his shirt. Maybe it was time to destroy them, though he wasn't entirely sure how. Maybe he could eat them. Everyone back, he shouted. We'll make our last stand here. <laughs>